computer. We meet again. For the last time. Oh no. No, please save me. No, no, help me. Did you spark? My only weakness. How did you know? Hello world and welcome to Hacks. In this video we're going to be looking at how you can compromise an entire machine with a £2 USB device that you can get from Amazon. We are of course talking about the Digistump DigiSpark. The Digistump DigiSpark, say that twice fast, is a programmable USB device uh, that is compatible with the Arduino integrated development environment. And you can program this device to act like the USB rubber ducky from Hack5. So if if you've been wanting to buy a rubber ducky from Hack5 but it's been sold out or is a little bit out of your price range, this is the cheap man's version of that or the tinkerer's version of that if you will. Um, it, as I said, you can get it for a couple of quid off of Amazon so you can get uh, a pack of five for 11 29 so just over two quid but not by much and the power that it gives you is immense. Uh, plugging this into a device will execute the predetermined keystrokes that you've written to it via the IDE so that you can tell the machine to do anything that you could tell it to do were you to be sat directly in front of it with a keyboard but in record time and uh, yeah one prerequisite of this is you do need the Arduino IDE kit you need the Digi Stump Arduino drivers and you need some scripts so once you've ordered your DigiSpark from Amazon and you've patiently waited for it to be delivered and it's arrived and you've unpacked it what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to head to the Arduino software store and you're going to need to download the latest version of the Arduino integrated development environment. You can see there you've got various installers. You can just download the Windows zip file and install that or just download. And once that's downloaded, you can extract it and you can install it. So the window that you can see on my screen now is the Arduino IDE. There are a few things we need to do before we can set this up and get going. First of which is to get the drivers for the uh, for the DigiSmart board. In order to do that, we're just going to go to File Preferences, and you can see there we have Additional Board Manager URLs. We're going to click on that window there, and we're going to paste this value in. You can see I've already pasted it. I'll put a note to it in the description, and I will also have a write-up on my blog that you can follow. And what this means is it just allows the IDE to talk to the board. And once you've done that, what you need to do then is you need to go to Tools, and you need to go to Boards, and select Board Manager. And what you can do is once that loads is you go to you go to contributed and you look for Digistump AVR boards and then you click install. So what you'll also need to do is you'll also need to download the Arduino drivers for the DigiSpark. So in order to do that, jump into Google and just Google Digistump DigiSpark Arduino drivers and that should take you to a GitHub link looking like the following. And as you can see there on the releases page on the third one down, you can see the Digistump drivers. Click on that, that will start a download in your browser. Then once it's downloaded, you need to extract the files on your machine and you should have something that looks like the following and you'll see there you've got install drivers but you've also got a uh, dp install 64 and dp install and what these are are the 32 and 64 bit variants and all you need to do is you need to click on the 64 bit allow your uac to install them and then go for the installation wizard and you can see there it installs all the different drivers and you can click finish there are a lot of payloads out there already for the DigiSpark. If you weren't feeling confident in writing your own one, you can go into Google and search for DigiSpark um, payloads. 
And one of the fun ones that I found were that had a lot of fun ones was this Sedatic Digispark scripts. And you can see there we've got a lot of good ones on here. We've got a wallpaper changer. I think there's like a fake Windows update that will play Rick Astley's Never Gonna Give You Up as well. Um, you've got like DNS poisoning, Thought Bomb. Don't run that one on your own system. That's dangerous. What that will do is it will continually spawn processes and those processes will spawn processes until it ties up all your system resources and crushes it. And then we have reverse shells, there you go, Rick Roll update, Silly Mice, Wallpaper Changer. So a lot of pranks, but there are some sort of dangerous scripts in here as well that you want to sort of be careful with. Um, but what I'm going to do is I've sort of taken the reverse shell script and modified it for my own sort of personal usage. So as you can see on my screen, I've got a .ino file, which is a Arduino sketch. And this is what is going to be written to the DigiSpark USB board. And this is what's going to happen when the script, when the USB device is plugged in. So I'll go through it with you. You can see you have your sort of scripts introduction. Again, where I've pinched it from somebody else's. I have modified this myself. And you can see there include DigiBoard, blah, 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 void setup. And you can see what it's going to do is it's going to send keystroke zero, it's going to give a delay of 500, and then it's going to use the Windows key and R. And what that's going to do is that's going to use, that's going to hit run. So if you're not familiar, the keyboard shortcut on Windows for opening up the run terminal is Windows key and R. Then it's going to delay. So then what's, that's going, what's going to happen then is that's going to bring up the run window. Then in the run window, you can see that Digi Keyboard Print is going to type PowerShell.exe. So that should spawn, well, so it'll type PowerShell.exe and then it will hit the enter key. So if you can imagine, you press Windows key and R, you type in PowerShell.exe, you hit enter, and then that will spawn a PowerShell window. And then you can see we've got another delay in there. And now I'm typing in invoke web request URI ain't file payload.ps1. And what that's doing is that is heading to this URL, downloading it and saving it as pay payload.ps1. And on that server is a payload. And in that payload is our PowerShell script that we're going to use to compromise the machine. And then we have a enter key. So we're trying to download the file, we're saving it to the current working directory. Um, you can specify your own directories, obviously. Then we're hitting the enter key again, we're sending another delay, and then we're executing the script. And that's it. So all it's doing is it's logging in, uh, you're putting a USB in, it's bringing up the Windows run, it's entering PowerShell.exe and hitting enter, it's delaying, it's waiting for the PowerShell window to open up, and it's downloading a file from my external website, uh, which is a, a PowerShell payload, and then it's trying to run that. Now, here you can see the payload itself. This is the thing that's hosted, this is the script that's hosted on the server that's going to be downloaded onto the host itself. Now, with a bit of tinkering, you could probably put this directly into the sketch so that you don't need to download anything from an external source. That would be particularly useful if you're plugging this into like an air gapped machine, but then what would be the point of doing a reverse shell? Um, but you know what I mean? It would be, you could probably put this onto the Arduino board itself or do something so that you don't have to rely on that sort of site being up and available. Because again, you know, you never know. But as you can see there, what it's doing is it's creating a new object, new net socket, and it's specifying 192.168.0.23, which is going to be the IP address of my attack box. This is the machine that I want it to connect back to. You see there, I've got a port of 4243, and that's really all you need to know. Um, it's standard reverse listener. Uh, it won't get past... Um, Defender and this is a sort of caveat that I have to make here for the demonstration here I have turned off Defender because it's pretty hard getting payloads past Defender these days without having to go through a bunch of obf Obfuscation and rewording a bunch of variables and things like that. So yeah, not every system that you'll plug into will be up to date So on some systems it might work without having to turn off Defender or on some older systems, but yeah uh, Defender is off for the purposes of this demo just because I couldn't really be bothered to faff around with having to try and find something to bypass it. Um, on other systems, though, you shouldn't have many issues if you're doing, like, netcat payloads to connect back and things like that. But um, as we're doing on a Windows machine, 
I have disabled Defender. But yeah, a uh, simple PowerShell reverse shell that I've saved. I've modified it with my IP address, my port, and I've thrown it onto the server. So what the script is going to do is when you plug the USB in, it's going to go to that URL. It's going to download that PS1 file, which is this script. And then it's going to try and execute that script, which should send a connection back to my attack machine, which will have a Netcat listener sitting there waiting for the connection to come back. So, when you're ready to write your sketch to your DigiSpark, grab your code, head over to the Arduino IDE, paste it in, go to File Preferences, double check that you've got the board in and that it's installed, go to Tools, go to Boards, go to DigiStump AVR Boards and select the DigiSpark default 16.5 MHz and then click Upload. Then what that will do is that will prompt a message down here saying plug in device now it's important that you don't plug in the device before this otherwise it won't recognize it and you'll run into a few errors but all you need to do is plug in the digispark you'll hear windows make a beep boop noise and then you should see it will start writing to the device now one thing to note is that it will attempt to execute the script once you plug it in. So if you're doing anything naughty, it's probably best not to do it on your own machine unless you want to rinse that machine completely. But there you go, the payload should now be written to the DigiSpark. Uh, again, it is important that you don't put the device in before you start the upload, otherwise you really encounter errors. It will either time out or it can produce like a 100 error message or a 400 error message on line 100 or something like that. Some of us do a libc. Um, yeah, I had a bunch of errors with it initially, but then yeah, if you don't plug it in first and you set the upload, it should be fine. Now what you should see on my screen is my map book, which is going to be my attack machine or the machine that the payload is going to connect back to. And as you can see there, I have the IP address of 192.168.0.23. Now if I head to the terminal, all I'm going to do is I'm going to do netcat or nc hyphen lvmp and I believe the port was 4243 and I'm going to hit return on that and I'm just going to sit there and wait because now we need to pop in the USB and that's going to be the thing that allows us to execute the script. Okay, so now that we have the attacker laptop set up and running and it has a listener listening on port 4243 with Netcat, what we can do is we can take the DigiSpark USB device and we can plug it into the USB port of the machine we want to attack and we should see what happens. Let's have a look. Plugging it in now. Got to give it a second for it to register. There we go, you can see it hit the run command and how quickly it's typing everything out. And we now have a connection back to our attack machine, so we can type commands like, Who am I? Um, we can do things like, Hostname. Or we could type in the current working directory just to confirm that we are in fact on a Windows machine. So yeah, the attack was successful. It created a reverse shell from our Windows machine back to our attack laptop. Okay, so wrapping up. Again, you can see the power of this. Um, it's a lot of fun. You know, programming Arduino boards is a lot of fun and a great sort of bit of knowledge to have. Um, you can do a lot with it and again there is a lot of power behind this so be careful what you do with it um, I would recommend using an external USB hub rather than plugging it directly into your laptop that way if the pins are shorted somehow it's got a bit of lint on there or you've crossed pins in some way um, you're not gonna fry your laptop because that well and truly that could happen you know if you plug it in and the boards defunct or there's something wrong with it or you've crossed the pins or something you could quite possibly fry your usb controller or even the motherboard itself so be careful with that use an external usb hub if you've got one or just use a laptop that you don't mind absolutely wrecking uh, another thing is is the power of it again you can run system level commands from a usb stick i hope this goes without saying but be careful what you run and only run it on systems that you have permission to run it on if you go and 
put some nefarious payload on this and stick it into a computer and it does some crazy stuff like delete system 32 or encrypt it and you can't undo the damage then you're going to be hard responsible for that uh again there's no get out of jail free card for this this is purely an academic and educational video showing you the fun you can have with these devices but if you are to go outside with a dodgy payload on there and go and plug it into somebody else's machine you're responsible for that and you will be in violation of the computer misuse act and it will be you serving the jail time if you get arrested you know you can't really say it was an accident it's pretty intentional what you're going out to do with these things so select your payloads carefully use an external usb hub only use it on devices that you own or have permission to test on or do these things on and just be prepared to cock up your system um, because these things can happen you know again it's one of those things you do in computing is when you sort of go through <laughs> your learning process with computing especially if you're self-taught you're gonna break stuff and you know what i say if you're not breaking stuff you're not trying hard enough because you will do things that don't behave the way they should do or the way you expected them to do and eventually they will you will break stuff um so yeah only do it on things that you own or have permission to test on and only things that you're willing to destroy because at the end of the day i'm not going to replace your laptop for you if you watch my video and break something that's my disclaimer this is educational only how do you mitigate something like this um super glue your usb port shut basically it's emulating a keyboard what can you do to prevent people typing on a keyboard you know without interrupting their day-to-day -day operations i'm sure as the technology develops we can i'm not even sure if there are mitigations out there already where it can tell the difference between that but in my mind you know unless you're blocking certain devices like arduinos from running those types of things you can't really just say sorry you can't use a keyboard do you know what i mean unless you're using like wireless keyboards and things like that but i'm pretty sure there'd be another attack vector there somewhere wouldn't there but anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed the video. I find this one a lot of fun. I have done a write-up on this using a different board entirely. One of the um, Leonardo CJMCU boards, which has got like um, an external SD card that you can plug into it. Um, but I want to do something on a DigiSpark because it's cheap and it's great. And you can just like have loads with different payloads on it, pull it out and just do a bunch of automation. So yeah let me know what you think give me a thumbs up if you liked it if it's your first time here maybe you could subscribe and leave a comment saying what you felt or what you thought of the video and i will see you next time kind regards bye